Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today I'm going to show you how to use Luminar AI as a plugin for Lightroom Classic. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump right in. So I have Lightroom Classic pulled up on my screen and when you install Luminar AI initially, it should install the plugins for both Photoshop and Lightroom Classic automatically. There is a step in the installation process where you need to check a box and tell Luminar to install the plugins. So if you forgot to do that and you get into Lightroom and let's go ahead and say we want to edit this image, I'm going to go here to down to export and here to Luminar AI. If you go into export and you see that you don't have Luminar AI here, what you'll need to do is launch Luminar AI as a standalone, install the plugins, and you'll want to do all of that with Lightroom closed. So let me quickly go ahead and show you where to find that inside of Luminar AI. Get that to pull up here, give it just a second. And it's really easy to find, really easy to do, and the key is right now I'm showing you with Lightroom open, but when you do this, if the plugins are not installed, you want to make sure that Lightroom is fully closed. And then once you install the plugins, you can go ahead and relaunch Lightroom. But let me quickly show you where you can find these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and let that open here just a second, give it a moment. All right, so where you'll find the, that option is under the file menu, and actually it'll be at a Luminar AI menu, excuse me, and install plugins. And it'll pop with a little window here. You can see that I already have my Photoshop and Lightroom plugins installed. Uh, if you need to, you can always uninstall and reinstall if you're having a problem with the plugin. But once you have those both marked as installed, so you can see they're both checked off, you can click done and then quit Luminar AI and go back to Lightroom and start working with Lightroom and Luminar AI as a plugin. So that's what we're going to do today. Up on the screen, I have a photo that I captured at the flower fields in Carlsbad, California back in, let's see here, my metadata says it was in 2014. And I like this image because I had one red flower in a sea of yellow ranunculus. Really, really beautiful place. If you get a chance to check it out during the spring, I highly recommend it. So what I want to do with this image is really zero in on this one flower because that's definitely my subject and tone down some of the bright highlights and just make the overall image look better. And I wanna do that in Luminar. So when I right click on an image, I go to export, you can see here from Luminar AI, I have an option to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments or open source files. Each one has its own pros and cons. Today I'm gonna to open source files and what that's gonna do is send my raw image over to Luminar AI. If I had made changes to this image in Lightroom, I would then do edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments it would then compress, it would put those edits into a TIFF file and then send that TIFF file with my edits to Luminar. The big difference is choosing which one you want to do your raw conversion. In this instance, I'm gonna allow Luminar AI to do my raw conversion. So let me go ahead and launch that and let that get going. If you guys have any questions as we're going through this, make sure you pop them into the chat and I'll do my best to answer them as we go along. So we'll give this another moment here for Luminar AI to load and it should pop us right into the templates. So for this image, we can go through and look at a few of the templates we have here. I might go down to my favorites and choose Fast Fix. Let's just see what that does. Now, I like Fast Fix on a lot of images. I'm not thrilled with what it did here. So I can just right click on my image and it's not letting me do that. So I'll go down here to the bottom. I'll go to the ellipses and go ahead and reset adjustments. And that's gonna take me back to my unedited image. From there, I can go straight to the Edit tab and start working this image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my Accent AI a little bit. That's gonna balance out the tones, which means it's going to pull up some of the shadows, tone down some of the highlights, pop the color a little bit, and add some contrast. So I'm gonna just use that probably at about a 40 or so, just enough to make a little bit of a difference. The next thing I wanna do is go to my composition and I want to, first of all, straighten this out so this flower is roughly straight. And then I'm gonna crop in fairly tight so that this flower really stands out among the sea of yellow. So let's first try our Composition AI and see what that recommends for us. Not really fond of that is it makes our subject cut off on the edge. So I'm gonna just move this over and move my mouse outside of the image. I'll get the double-headed arrow from there. I can rotate this a little bit to straighten it out and pull in from the side here a little bit more to get a composition that I like better. Might pull that in just a tiny bit more, and I really like that. So I'll hit return on my keyboard, 
to go ahead and apply that crop. And now this crop, you know, the image already looks 10 times better just with recomposing um, it via the crop. Hello, Pat. So glad you're here today. I see that you have an unrelated question. Uh, will the upcoming Boca tool just select and blur the background or will it create what we would call a good bokeh? That is a great question. And since I haven't tried it yet, I can't give you a firm answer on that, but I really look forward to getting that tool. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I can't wait to see what it can do. More news on that coming, I think in the next couple of months. So stay tuned on that one. All right, so back to our ranunculus here. I also wanna add a little bit of extra detail to the flower, our red one here, our subject. So I'm gonna to go to my structure tool and pull up my structure just a little bit. Now you have to be careful with, with structure and flowers because they can start to look crunchy very quickly. So I'm gonna use a pretty low amount and I really only want that structure here on this red flower. So I'm gonna use my masking tool. I'm gonna to click on paint a mask and I'm just going to paint that effect in just over this one flower. And I can go a little bit over the edges. It's a nice soft, big brush, so it's not gonna hurt anything. So there we go, and now our structure is on that flower only. We can do the same thing with our detail sliders, and I'm going to copy this mask. So I'm gonna go to the details and add a little bit, just a tiny bit of small details and a little bit of medium details. And again, I really only want this on the flower here. So now that I've made some adjustments, you see our masking option becomes available. I'll click on add mask. And instead of painting in a new mask, I'm gonna click on the ellipses again and paste the mask from the first one. So again, our details that we've added are only here on this flower. Now I really want to pull back on some of the highlights and adjust my tone and my contrast a bit. Now we can do that in the light tool here. You can pull down on highlights, you can adjust smart contrast. Those are great options, but what I like even better is down at the bottom under the professional section, we have super contrast. And this allows you to dial in contrast for your highlights, midtones, and shadows separately. And in this case, I definitely want to target those highlights. And you can see as I bring this up, we're bringing back a lot of detail here in this brightest part of the red flower. And we can even adjust that balance if we feel like it pulled back a little bit too much. And I think that looks really beautiful. So just that one adjustment there, let's turn that off and back on. You can see we regained a lot of detail in these most highlighted parts here at the top of the flower. We can also adjust our mid-tones a tiny bit. I'm not sure it needs a whole lot. Let's take a look here at what we can do. I wouldn't do too much there. I think that looks pretty good. And again, let's take a look at that before and after. Looking lovely. The last thing I would do to this image is add a nice, big, soft vignette. So we'll go to our vignette tool and I'm gonna pull my knot slider all the way down to negative 100. I'm even gonna bring the size down a little bit smaller and click into the advanced settings. We're gonna pull that feather up really high because I want it to be a big soft vignette and I might even add a tiny, tiny bit of inner light. Now you can see that right now the center of the vignette is automatically placed to the very center of the photo and we actually want it to be over here on this ranunculus. So I'm gonna click on choose subject, move that over, right maybe about there. And I'm just clicking until I find the placement that I want. And one of the reasons that I take the amount slider all the way down to negative 100 is I can really see and visualize where this vignette is affecting the photo. Once I get it placed where I want it, you can un unselect, choose subject, and then go to your amount slider and pull that back up to a point that you think it looks natural. And I don't wanna do it too heavy, but because it's such a big soft vignette, we can go to a higher number than you could with less feathering. The feathering is gonna make that nice smooth transition to where somebody's not gonna look at your image and go, ooh, nice vignette. That's not really the reaction you typically want. You don't want people to know you've added a vignette. You just wanna subtly guide your viewer's eye to your subject, which is what I think we did here. So that looks really good. We can take a look at our overall before and our after. Just a few really quick edits and it really made this image come alive. So from there, I can click apply and this will take me on a round trip back to Lightroom. Give me a moment here. And it'll appear in Lightroom right next to any other edits you've done and the original image. So there's our edit from today, right back in Lightroom so I can then 
continue on editing in another image, um, another program. I could right click on this, go to edit in Photoshop, all sorts of things you could do. I could export this, add my watermark, send it to social media, send it to a print lab, whatever it is your final goal with it is with an image, you can do that from here. So working with Lightroom and Luminar AI as a plugin is a great way to uh, integrate Luminar AI into your existing workflow. I've been a Lightroom user since Lightroom 1, and I've got a lot of history, a lot of images in Lightroom, and I'm not planning to change that at any time in the future. But I love integrating other tools that broaden my workflow, make certain things easier, and ultimately allow me to make a better image, which is why I do things like adding Luminar AI to my workflow. So hopefully this is helpful to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at Angela at Skylum.com. I love hearing from each and every one of you. Let me know in the comments and in the chat if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them there as well. And if this episode was helpful to you, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. And that tells our producers that you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me and spending a little bit of time with me this afternoon. I will see you again on Friday. Bye-bye.